Uh, well, hello, this is Steve Kemp with the People Not Titles podcast, and I am so excited today to have Ted Thomas on. It's been a long time that I've want, wanted to have you on, Ted. I'm ready to go. All right. Ted, can I, um, am I responsible for paying the utilities like water, heating, electric, and all that for the tax deed home? Yeah. Um, when you go to the auction, what happens if you buy a property, it's the same thing as buying any property. You now are a hundred percent control. So you owe the taxes. You're going to, if you have utilities, if you got water, whatever it is, you're going to have to pay that. However, a tax lien certificate, the property owner stays in the property. You're not allowed to talk to them. You're not allowed to charge them rent. You're not allowed to inspect the property. You have to leave them alone. They're, they're entitled to quiet title. So you have to leave them alone. So they will pay their own taxes. They live there as if nothing happened until okay. that expiration date. The, when the redemption date's over, it's over. It's all over. And they may not even know that you bought their uh, their taxes, or do they get notified? If they're they will be paid? notified, they will they will be notified okay. that their tax. Deed Can I sold. buy at an auction with credit cards, Ted? Ah, that's beautiful. Okay, now here's what's happening. This is really beautiful. All right, so I bought in New York. I bought um, I bought uh, two colonials and two regular houses. Now the colonials, one of them was on five acres with seventy five year old trees. The other colonial set by itself, and as it looked like a just a colonial, but it was actually two houses in one. Okay, I bought both of those properties. Uh, They're both worth, um, I thought, around 400, 500. I bought them for 150, and I used a credit card. Wow. I used a credit. Okay, so New York takes credit cards, Michigan takes credit cards, uh, Arkansas takes credit cards. So there's three of them that take credit cards. So that's something new this year. They're just starting to do that. So, uh, folks, I'm all for that. Keep your money and buy with the credit card. Awesome. Okay. So you got some skeptical investors, Ted, that say, what about the homes that are still in debt with the banks, right? How can a tax lien just buy those houses unless the bank writes it off? And that seems very unlikely to happen. Okay. Um, let's understand when you raise your hand at the auction like this, what you're buying is you're buying the first lien on the property at a tax lien sale. When you're buying a tax defaulted property, you are buying from the treasurer. The treasurer is the most powerful person in government. And what the treasurer will do is they will give everyone that's on title a notice. In other words, a dentist that didn't get paid, someone that has a judgment, someone that has a second lien or first lien or anything, everybody gets a notice that says, this house is going to auction. An auction is nothing more than a big washing machine. You throw the property in there, it washes it clean of all liens. When you take the Levi's out, they're clean. When you take the property out from the auction, it's clean. It has no liens. When you buy at a tax defaulted auction, the liens are clear. All right. However, some government liens could stay on it. For example, a municipal lien could stay on it. We're going to teach you this. A tax, a, a IRS lien. Could lien. Stay. Okay. Those liens could stay on Now, a tax lien. You bought the first lien. The first lien is the county lien. Every other lien is junior to that. An IRS lien is a junior lien. It's junior to the mortgage in most cases. Okay, got it. All right, now an IRS lien, so if you didn't know it, an IRS lien will fall off the property at 120 days. Automatically, it drops in 120 days. Are they gonna tell you? No, but that's what you got me for. I'm just gonna tell you, it drops. Okay, if the IRS doesn't drop it, the IRS is going to buy the property. They're going to give that property owner, whoever bid, back their money at 6%, and they're going to take it over. The only time they're going to do that is on properties that are worth millions of dollars. They're wow. not going to do that on a regular house because the IRS, their sales, if you go look at IRS sales, their, their sales usually start at 40% of retail. Okay. Uh, so is it better then for me to go to a big city for these auctions or uh, or a big county, or is it better for small town, you know, county in like Arizona, you know? Well, you go to Arizona. If you're the, if you're a, you're a buyer, you'll recognize the buyers in the room that fast. You'll know who the buyers are, right? Most people are timid bidders. Sometimes a person will say, I'll, I'll bid eight, uh, uh, 8,000. And you'll say 9,000 and the auction deal sold. In that little town, because they just want to get done. In the big city, they're going to have a professional auctioneer. 
Okay. 9,000 nothing. He's trying to get that thing to go to 29. Okay, great. And, uh, you know, Ted, you mentioned boots on the ground. This guy from Utah bought in Michigan. Did he actually have boots on the ground there? No, he did just what you would do. You would hire a local broker. Okay. And you'd say to that local broker, look, I'm probably going to buy some t around this town. I'm not going to promise you're going to get the deal. But I'd like to know if you would you look at this property? Can you tell me what the market? Is? Now, re remember, it would tax the profit, tax the father property. They're going to be used and abused. They're not taken care of. Yeah. All right. So, so he sent the he sent the broker out there. Broker checked it all out. Broker gave him all the comps. Okay. Broker. So he simply asked the broker this question, and every one of them can answer it. If you have to sell it tomorrow by seven o'clock, what's it worth? Not what you can get in ninety days. Then you know you never. Then you know what your price is. You have Ted, to ask that. Yeah, Ted, so that's always, fascinating. You know, always sorry. use the people locally. That broker will have an attorney. That broker will have a fixer-upper person. Yeah. That broker will have a painter, a cleaner, everything that you ever need. Why do you need to develop a network? I have classes where I teach people to develop a network. Half of them never get it done. But if they don't get it done and they don't get a broker, they're not going to be successful. You need to get that broker to do all that work. So what if they get a commission? They're not going to be unhappy taking a commission. Even on a hundred thousand dollar deal, they'll be happy with that. And yeah, and, yeah. When, when, Ted, that's fascinating because you know most of our constituency are brokers, and so this is a great way for them to build extra value to their investors, add another element or a dimension to. Right now, investors are waiting with money, but they have nothing to buy because their inventory is low. And now, as a broker, I'm coming to them saying, "Hey, listen." Let's look at this. Well, let me show you an example of how good this could be. I'm just I'm just shuffling around a bunch of papers and stuff on my yeah. desk. All right. This is an auction brochure. I just picked one. You saw me. I didn't rehearse this. It's in New York. And you can see on the bottom, it says New York State Auctions. Okay. You can go look yep. it up on the internet. You'll find yep. it. Okay. You'll find it. Just, just test me. Okay. In it, they put a picture of every property. And they give you a description. So I can get that. Okay, I can go online and find that property online because it's already online. Then I can call a broker and I say, can you go look at that property? What's it really look like? I just got this little picture, yeah. right? I can know everything about that property. Then what I do, I I do. I'm a conservative. I, just because I wear these wild shirts doesn't mean I'm not conservative. I'm not going to lose my assets. I am right. not going to lose my assets. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> and then I get on the jet. I fly there. I get a rental car. Matter of fact, I take one of my people with me so they can drive the car so I can look at the property. I get out, I get my shoes dirty. I walk in the mud and I walk around that property. Okay, how much work is that? All right, now, am I a, am I a control freak on that auction? Yes, I wanna know everything I can. Do I know what the property next door is? Do I know what the other side is? The broker can tell me everything about the neighborhood. What if, it, what if the factory that was building the Remington rifle is just closing down? Whoa, wait a minute. I'm not sure I wanna get that one because what's gonna happen in this neighborhood short term? All right. All these old neighborhoods, all these old neighborhoods, who knows more about the neighborhood than the broker? Nobody. Yeah. And if I'm a and if I'm a broker and I'm helping my constituency buy some of these things, they're not just going to buy the property, they're going to sell the property too eventually. And guess what? That's a listing for you, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um Ted, so I know we we're coming close to our time here. Uh, Ted, I just want to talk about your motivation here for doing this. That's what impressed me. That's right. another reason why I well, thank wanted you. to thank lift you. up, uh, lift you up as uh, kind of this uh, subject matter expert here. So, give us what is your motivation here? Okay. Well, um, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm 84 years old. I'll be 85 but probably by the time you guys see this video. So, um, I work every day. Um, I've built a business. I have employees here in the in the states. I employ people in in uh, Panama to do all my. All, all, all my tech work and I employ coaches that live in all parts of the world. And um, this is a, not only a good business to make money, not just for me, but for the employees that I have, but the money I'm making today, I live humbly. Uh, I live in a, a, a mid-rise uh, condo, which I rent. I'm down to three properties that I own. I've been selling, I've been in the real estate business since I, I was a, a pilot. My first career was a, as a pilot and I've, I've been selling properties for the past year. I'm down to three now. By year end, I'll be down to one. And uh, I've already written my will and my trust and everything that I make, I don't have any relatives, uh, uh, everything I, I'm, I make, I'm gonna give to Habitat. So wow. 
Uh, money I make today, I give to Habitat's probably going to buy, oh, 40, 50 homes for that girl that's probably running a McDonald's and got two kids that that handsome dude with all that black hair made her pregnant, but now he's gone. But mm. she's still bringing those kids up and she's still working 12 hours a day at McDonald's. So uh, I'm used, I, I'm joking when I say McDonald's, it's not, it's just hard work is what I'm saying. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of those people need a little help. They make, you know, 50 grand a year. Well, they're not going to live like you and I live uh, at 50 grand a year. But if we give them a house and get them started, they're going to live good. And maybe those kids get a chance to go to school. I love it, Ted. So Ted, People are here and they're like, okay, how do I learn more? What do I do next? Tell us, what, what's the next step for some okay. people that want to do more, learn more, make more? Every two weeks, I do an all-day workshop. It's myself and my coaches and my people that work with me. We do an all-day workshop. It starts at 11 in the morning, goes all the way to 6 o'clock. It's virtual. You can sit it on your rusty dusty. You can have a coffee. You can have a drink. You can have your lunch. You can have breakfast, lunch with us. And we're going to teach you for six hours. So if you're learning something now, just imagine what would happen in six hours time. Now, I don't do anything free. I'm not an internet marketer. I'm a teacher. Okay. $47 is what I charge for it. You can register below me when we finish. 